All right, guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about TSA locks. Uh, I did a video about 3D printing keys for these, I guess uh, two or three years ago. Didn't work out so well. Um, the way that all played out for you guys who didn't see the video is that a TSA agent was interviewed by, I think it was uh, the New York Times or Washington Post. Anyway, he showed off a complete set of the TSA keys, all seven of them. He fanned them out and showed them off to the photographer who then dutifully snapped a picture, put it in a newspaper, and then hackers got the pictures, analyzed them, and then created 3D plans for the TSA keys, all seven of them. Now, a lot, a lot of us grabbed them up, and we tried printing them, and a couple of them worked, and most of them didn't for a variety of reasons. The TSA depends on a couple of things for security. The first, of course, is we have seven different keys. Almost all of them have pretty extreme bidding, which makes them a little difficult to pick. They all have very tiny keyways, like this little guy right here. And in addition to a tiny keyway, they've got some odd shapes that make it difficult to tension some of them. Again, you can see how that's kind of fanned out there. So to make it really difficult to get a tensioner and a pick in there at the same time. So those really are the three things that they depended on. So when we tried to print the keys, they were so thin and so small, they ended up snapping off. And we'll take a look at a couple of those in just a minute. Um, I don't have a set of the $1,200 TSA keys, but what I do have is these guys. This is a brand new set of LockMaster luggage keys from Vent, the Xiafix. There you see the website on the bottom, and I'll put all this down in the description. It isn't $1,200, but it's not cheap either. Inside of here, we, saw, we find all seven keys, every single one of them. These are not, also 3D printed, but not out of plastic. These are 3D printed out of metal, which unfortunately is not a cheap process. That's the same process used to make parts for jet engines and automobiles. So very, very tough material, but it's slow. And, and as I said, it's expensive. This set of seven keys, uh, I had to pay 389 euros. That's about $420 at today's exchange rate. As time goes on, I expect the price will go down, but that's what these things cost now. It's cheaper than $1,200, I'll grant you that, but I think unless you're a, you, know, you work for customs or law enforcement, that's probably how they're limiting access to these things. Anybody can buy them, not the TSA keys, only TSA can buy those, but these are available pretty much to anybody with 389 euros. All right, let's take a look at these guys. We have all seven of them. Now, before I start playing with them, I'll show you the three that the community had 3D printing out of plastic, and that was this guy, and he is number three. And I think you can see right away why. It's a very thin-bladed key with two very deep cuts. So it's, it's very weak right there and at the second cut. And that's usually where they broke off. If you could get it inserted in the lock, as soon as you tried to turn it, it would generally snap off inside the lock. So not so much luck with number three. Number four also was a little bit of a problem. It's a, th it's a lot thicker, but these two little tits, these little knobs sticking out on the ends, tended to snap off inside the lock. Didn't work so good. Um, number one and two did work. Uh, five worked. Uh, six was a little bit problematic, and here's why. I have a key here. Now let me show you why. On a normal key that comes with a dimple uh, TSA lock, there's a single groove, and if your groove is in the wrong place, the key won't insert all the way in the lock. So that's what those are for. On the TSA lock, obviously you have grooves in every single location. So I had trouble with the resolution of 3D printers getting, getting those grooves in the right place without over melting. And the other thing we had trouble with is getting the depth of the cuts to print correctly. It just never seemed to work out. So there we go. There's the 3D uh, print of number six. And then the last one is number seven. Now this is truly if you only have one key, this is probably the one you want. Number seven, if you buy 100 locks from Amazon or eBay, they're all going to be keyway number seven, or at least 95% of them. So a couple of disadvantages here. One, it's lifted off of the print surface, so one side of it tended to droop when you printed it. It's also a very thin key, and also we have some very deep cuts in several of those positions. They're all opposite of each other, so that makes it extra thin because you can put this key in either way. So these tended to break pretty much all along the shaft. They just didn't work out very well at all. Being made out of metal, we're going to find out if these do work. So let's take a look. i got a variety of locks here, a few different keyways. All right, combination lock. Um, 
This one, the keyway or the combination is 723. So let's just dial it in 723. And the, the shackle will lift straight up and it'll clear that and then rotate out of the way. All right, let's close that back up so the shackle doesn't lift up. Let me show you how the keyway works. So let's grab this and I can already tell there's number three sticks out further than anybody else. Really weird keyway for, for this key, but again, it's to keep us from tensioning it or, or picking it. Slide it all the way in, and when we rotate it, notice that little shield will rotate out of the way. The combination side is still locked, but now you can rotate this out, access it, put it back, and then relock it. So very cool, works like a champ, no weakness at all, inserts perfectly. Next one, number seven. This is by far the most common key. It's also the most delicate key when you print it in plastic or PLA. There we go. Slide this dude in there. Those springs are pretty tight. Give it a little rotate and it will pop out. So very cool. You do have to lock it while the key is still in there. So it's for that, uh, kind of like consider it key retaining. And now it's locked back up. All right, this next one's kind of funny. This is a, I never understood these. Before the coronavirus, you guys know I travel a lot with my job. Um, I've been seeing more and more of these. These are not cheap locks. It uses a fingerprint. It's a fingerprint technology lock. You have to charge it here. There's a USB port. If the battery dies, you can't get in it. So it's kind of weird. And this is like putting a vault door on the front door of your house and a cardboard door on the back of your house. So that would be the back door. That would be the front door. Uh, and then securing your cardboard door with like a master lock number three. Anyway, ma uh, fingerprint lock. You take your finger, you stick it on there. And if you are incorrect, you get a red light. You get... I think it's 10 tries, and then the thing will lock itself. I think it's for about 15 minutes. I'm not going to do that. I am going to use the correct finger, place him on there. We should get a blue light, and it pops open. So very, very cool when the battery is alive. All right, we take a look at this. We don't need that level of technology. If we have a key number 7, grab key number 7, slide him in there, rotate it, and we get an open. This one also is key, or this one, yeah, it is key retaining, I think. You have to stick them in and then rotate the key back. There we go. All right, number, key number seven. Now let's get down to this one. I bought four of these, and to their credit, uh, these are keyed differently. Uh, some of them have different dimple cuts. Some of them have the slots in a different place or a combination of those two. This thing works beautifully. It's very smooth. Uh, it is probably shimmable if you can find a tiny, tiny little shim, but... I don't have them, so instead, I'm going to find out if the infamous number six works. Okay, we'll tell you it's a little tight, but it does go right in there, and it does work perfectly. Now, let's see if I can get them out. There we go. All right, number six works. So everything we tried so far works. This last one's kind of cool. Um, I see more and more of these. These also are not cheap locks. By the way, that one I think sells for like 50 bucks. Not cheap. This one's about 40, um, but it's it's a novelty type item. It's made by a company called Talon Port. And here's your keys. You guys have seen these before. You get a credit card to put inside your wallet. And there's your key. You got two of them, one on each side. And then there's one to put on your keychain. And the way that works, there's a slot on the inside of it. Slide them in and get them open. Very cool, very unique, but uh, difficult to pick. But this guy, not so much. Again, common, common number seven. I can pick him out of a crowd. There he is right there. Again, slide him in, rotate, get it open, get it open. It is key retaining, so we got to lock him back up. And I think TSA probably does that on purpose to avoid sending an unlocked uh, lock back onto the line. They, they want to make sure they're locked back up. Anyway, I guess there you go. I got to say, they are excellent, excellent keys. I've had no problem with them whatsoever. Every lock I stuck them in, they work beautifully. I've had, I, they're very, very strong being made out of metal. So no problems there. Pretty stiff price. 389 euros is $420. Now, that's an awful lot, but if you're law enforcement or customs or government or maybe just a well-heeled spy, it's a lot cheaper than the $1,200 TSA set of keys. I got to say that. And they work just as well. Anyway, guys, this everything you see there will be the giveaway this week. Uh, if you want to know how to register, just stick around, and I will show you how to do it. Appreciate your time, guys.
Stay safe, stay legal, and stay healthy. Thanks, guys. All you need to do is navigate to locklab.com, the tribal website, and scroll down in the middle of the page. You'll see all the giveaway buttons Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But the one you're looking for is the weekend review giveaway, Purple Band. Just click on it. It'll take you to the registration page. Again, scroll to the bottom, put in a good email address. So if you win, I can get in touch with you, let you know. Put in a username, doesn't matter what it is, and click Submit. When you're done, you'll get a green check mark confirming your entry. Thanks, guys.